one day I'll just come and sit here and put a couple rods out for carp. Kind of cozy. If I just sat here and kept the tips down, I bet you they'd be all right out there. Hello and welcome to the breakdown. And when I say breakdown, I'm not referring to my mental state. I'm talking about the process of uh, approaching a new swim or a swim that you haven't fished in a long time. And uh, that's part of the show. And the other part of the show basically is it's from the perspective of two anglers. Uh, John and I haven't been able to get together to film many videos this year. And uh, the breakdown was an idea for us to make videos together when we can't get out together. So we're both going to attack a new swim, a new swim to us, or a swim we haven't fished in a long time. And we're going to take you through the process of figuring out why we're there, how we're going to approach it, where we think the fish are going to be, how we're going to bait, the rigs we're going to choose. And at the end of the show, uh, Maybe we'll both have caught, maybe only one of us will caught, uh, but at the end of the day, hopefully we'll provide you with some ideas or insights as, as to how or why people uh, can and will and do uh, approach new swims and uh, incorporate those into your rotation as you, uh, you know, progress through your season. And uh, it'll give you the, the tools maybe or the, the incentive or the inspiration to get out and uh, find new swims. This swim, it's a little bit further uh, down river here. I'm in Fort Erie, uh, right where the lake narrows down into the Niagara River and flows down to the falls and eventually dumps into Lake Ontario. Uh, I chose this spot for the first episode uh, mainly because it's a larger body of water and uh, this time of year uh, this is October 31st uh, the weather can do a lot of crazy things that can shut the fish down but fishing a, a larger body of water uh, we figured the temperatures might be a little more stable and the fish might not shut down as hard if, if the weather gets unstable another thing I like about this area if the fish are moving around getting ready for winter or changing their habits. There's a lot of interesting things here for the fish. Um, they can swim out into the main lake, maybe forage for some different types of food. And then if they come into the river down here, uh, they might be looking for some different food. But in either case, they're gonna be burning calories and needing to replace that energy. So hopefully uh, when I get down to the swim there, I'll go through my process, give you my first reactions and a little bit of history I have with the swim and uh, we'll take you through the rest of the episode. So here we go, first episode of the breakdown. Okay, uh, we drove down the street a little ways here. Uh, we're in the swim that we chose. Um, it's one of the first couple of, uh, there's only a few current breaks. Uh, between the main lake and here, and this is pretty much a major current break uh, coming this way as well. Sometimes it ends up being a bit of a back eddy as well. And uh, so I've chosen this spot as kind of a, a choke point for fish that are naturally traveling either from the river to the lake or from the lake to the river. Uh, the current is just ripping out there and so as much as this might look like a giant river uh, when you take the current into into account there's really not that much distance between where I'm standing and where the major current is so it's not as big of a piece of a water as you might think uh, from the fish's perspective as they're going about their business uh, so the plan here today uh, the water is much clearer than I uh, expected, so I'm probably going to bait a little bit less. I'm only going to fish two lines. I imagine I'm going to bait like 
in a straight line to kind of intercept the fish that may be traveling along the current line and then if the current line uh, moves during the day then at least I still might have one rod out of the current if that, if that fluctuates through the day um, but before I go ahead and get the bait and everything in um, I'm probably just going to let around for a moment make sure there aren't any major snags out there or uh, weed beds that I need to know about once I've got that narrowed down a bit I'll probably get some rigs out there um, Anyways, I'm going to let around for a moment and uh, make sure there's no major surprises in there and then get the rigs out and the bait out. This is kind of a fish magnet spot. Um, there's always local anglers in here. I would probably like to be a little further down perhaps, but if there are other multi-species anglers around, they're likely going to want to be over there. So I'm just going to migrate this way to, to, to make sure that I don't encounter anyone else or have to fish around anyone else. Uh, but this is a natural sort of fish magnet in the area. I have seen carp here while I'm fishing in the winter, uh, going for other species like lake trout and walleye and everything. I've, I've hooked um, coarse fish th all through the winter through here, uh, catfish and sheephead, all in this kind of area. So I'm just gonna make sh get the let out, try to avoid a completely silty area. Maybe uh, like if, I, if I can find a more gravelly area, then I might try to gravitate towards that. But uh, we'll figure that all out with the lead and uh, then we'll get started. So as predicted, uh, there are some other anglers that have arrived and they've kind of gone into the popular casting spot behind me here so I'm glad that I chose to set up where I am. I've picked two spots. Um, I let it around and there's not like a huge difference in any of the spots. There doesn't really seem to be any significant weed beds or anything. The bottom is all fairly consistent. I think most of the rocks are further down the bank that way. Uh, I just chose two landmarks. There's a big tower across from me with a flashing light. I think I'm going to place one rod halfway to the current towards that. And then there's another weird uh, hydro tower behind me, like a three post hydro tower. If I cast in line with that, there's like a shallow ledge over here where I'm getting a pretty hard drop. So uh, I'm going to put one on the shallow ledge uh, towards the triple tower and one halfway out towards the single tower with the flashing light there. Uh, I, I was on the way here thinking I was going with bottom baits or wafters on, uh, on a hair rig. Uh, I was just anticipating there being like a lot more lot larger size boulders over here. It doesn't seem to be the case. I think from my jig fishing in the winter time, it feels like there's a significant difference. It feels like most of the boulders are that way. So I don't think the rig is the biggest concern. I think just getting time behind the rods is going to be uh, the, the primary focus. But so in the meantime, I might just pop out the rigs that I have on from my last trip, which are just uh, Ronnie rigs with triple pop-up corn. I'll pop those out, get the bait over top of it, and then in the meantime, I might try up a, tie up a couple of uh, uh, just standard hair rigs and uh, maybe fish one pop-up uh, on the ledge, and then maybe another bottom or maybe a pop-up out in the deeper water and then maybe a wafter on, on the ledge. But uh, 
who knows, maybe I'll be into fish before I even get a chance to do that, but uh, that's the plan. Now I'm going to execute. Okay, I've had the lines out for about half an hour now and uh, no action. And the rigs that are out there are pretty tattered. I've used them for a couple sessions and uh, so I figured uh, just for my confidence and for the landing ratio and for my, uh, my mental stability, I figured uh, I'd tie up the fresh rigs that I was talking about earlier with the, just the standard hair rigs. And uh, I'm gonna pop those out there. I tied up uh, two hair rigs here. I have one. Uh, I'm gonna fish as a pop-up and one that I'm gonna fish as a bottom bait slash kind of wafter. Um, I tied up just the hair rigs here with the ESP uh, strip tees as the hook link, uh, medium uh, monster carp swivel, got the ESP uh, rig sleeve, uh, super soft uh, camo shot or just a super soft shot from Ra uh, Raven, uh, size 4 monster hook, a little bit of rig tubing, ESP rig tubing, ESP uh, pop-up corn, uh, some bucket corn here, and uh, got a little hair stop here to, to kind of pin the, uh, the baits from sliding back towards the hook, and uh, got the little rig sleeve on the back of the shank just to keep everything tidy and from wrapping around on the on the cast so uh, on my first recast here I'm gonna get those out as my new rigs I'm gonna have the pop-up one in the deeper water and then uh, the bottom bait uh, I'm gonna use use the bottom bait uh, on the, the shallower ledge and uh, hopefully we can make something happy here I uh, I've been watching the weather for better part of a week now. Been watching the weather for a better part of a week now because uh, it's Halloween and I wanted to know if uh, my daughter was going to be trick-or-treating in the rain or not. Uh, well, the rain is here and uh, I can show you the forecast. The, the lake has been really calm for the last couple of days. Um, so the water is super clear. Uh, so. That's why I wanted to go with one of the bottom baits, not as blatant. Um, if and when John gets out here for his uh, his leg of the uh, the breakdown, he might be facing kind of different conditions. Um, as of November first, I think the the water agreement between Canada and the states, I think they bring the water level down a little bit as of November first. So whatever John is facing here when he tries to break down uh, this swim uh, if he might be facing uh, different conditions and it is late in the fall now so uh, anything's possible but uh, I'm still confident uh, I'm happy with the spot uh, even though I don't really know a lot about it or uh, I think it's going to be potentially productive uh, hopefully it's productive today this exact spot for the first time for carp uh, almost six years ago uh, early in the spring in like 2017 I think it was trying to get ready for the Fish in Canada Carp Cup and uh, Anyways, it's, it's been at least five years, and uh, I was here like, it was 
was in uh, maybe April, and uh, the uh, there was a lot of ice ice coming down the river, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, wasn't the most ideal conditions. Uh, but anyways, there's a lot of positive signs today, like uh, the sun keeps kind of peeking out and uh, changing the light conditions, so if there's any fish down there, kind of might uh, trigger them to, to have a little nibble. Uh, the clarity is like amazing. Uh, I can see uh, a little pod of minnows sitting in the margins in front of me, having a good munch. Taking a break from all the all the cormorants and everything else, and the game fish that are chasing them, but it kind of gave me an idea to customize some baits for trout fishing uh, in a couple weeks when uh, when I switch gears. But uh, it's starting to feel like it's not going to be a super smash up kind of number day. Uh, which I didn't really expect being it's almost November right now, but uh, It still feels really positive. I, I feel like it should happen I'm, I don't really have any doubts creeping in or anything yet uh, It's uh, 12 o'clock now I've had my lines in for about an hour and a half. Uh, so I got maybe, if I push it, I might be able to stick for another two hours and then I gotta go get my daughter from school and uh, get ready for uh, trick or treating, carve a pumpkin and everything. Uh, but uh, I'm happy with the rigs I have out. I'm happy with the amount of bait. Uh, there isn't anything that I'm kind of uh, it's causing me any uncertainty. Uh, I'm pretty confident with everything that's happening. Uh, let's hope something, uh, the fish kind of makes, uh, makes a presence here and uh, for, uh, it'll just feel a lot better heading home. Uh, a bit of a sense of accomplishment if I could pull a fish out of a new swim and that's all, that's all part of the breakdown. Be nice to have another swim that uh, can work into the rotation. This one's got a lot of pluses. There's, there's a Tim Hortons not too far off. You can fish pretty much out of the back of your car. And uh, it's kind of a nice relaxing place at the moment. You can hear a bit of a buzz from the highway on the other side of the river, but it's not overpowering the waves, lapping the shore and that. so. Uh, it's a good day so far, and uh, it would get better. It would get better if I could uh, put a carp on the bank. All right, I think I've had the the lines in for the better part of uh, two hours now. Maybe only an hour with the uh, with the hair rigs on, and the close to a half an hour or so with earlier on with the uh, with the Ronnie rigs on. But. Uh, uh, I got just over an hour left, so uh, I think just to stay active, I'm gonna recast the rods and uh, put a couple, uh, two or three more spots over each of the each of the, the rigs, and uh, hopefully uh, make something happen just by uh, staying active. And I don't think the recast is really gonna hurt. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna spook anything off or. You know, if they aren't presenting well now, then maybe the recast will work out to my, to my benefit. But uh, I'm just going to stay active, get uh, a couple more spots out, some recast, and uh, hopefully we can make something happen.
I got, I don't know, maybe half an hour left. Um, I just had a weird, like, twitchy kind of drop back sort of situation with my left hand rod, the, the deep rod. It's the most indication I've had the whole time I'm here. And like, it was like a drop back, then it got kind of twitchy, and then it tightened up, and uh, lifted the rod. I saw the bobbin was kind of bouncing a bit still, lifted into nothing. Um, I don't know, there wasn't anything on my line, uh, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there. So, uh, just a quick boost with the spray, my pineapple butyric acid spray. Pop the line back out there. Uh, I was almost certain I was going to get a fish here today. It hasn't happened yet. I have a bit of time left. If it doesn't happen today, uh, we haven't really finalized the rules for the breakdown, but uh, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't produce a fish. Um, I think I might. I might sneak out here again tomorrow before work, um, and uh, try to make something happen. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't think there's a lot of bait that really gets trickled in here, and uh, it'd be interesting to see if uh, if I get a chance to come back tomorrow and fish over the same spots, if uh, I might be able to make something happen. But. Uh, I kind of expected this kind of spot would be a spot I could just rock up onto and there would potentially be fish moving through and I would kind of intercept them on their way in or out of the river or the lake or whichever direction they're headed. Uh, I'm going to be patient, sit behind the rods for uh, whatever time I have left and uh, potentially sneak out again tomorrow morning. Okay, it's been a bit of a mad dash this morning. Got my daughter to school and got the garbage and recycling and everything out. And the back. Try to uh, finish breaking down this session. Uh, breaking down this swim. Uh, I got the lines back out roughly where they were yesterday and I've topped up the bait over top uh, this is about the time that I got my lines in yesterday uh, and uh, I got about three hours uh, to sit behind the lines today hopefully uh, we can get uh, the fish out of this swim and then uh, decide whether it was uh, whether I broke it down efficiently uh, or if maybe I, I missed uh, a key piece of the puzzle that maybe John will uh, will hit on when uh, when he breaks down the, the swim. Um, this is a kind of an awkward time of year to be uh, approaching a new swim. It's uh, November the 1st now, Halloween's over. I ate my share of uh, peanut M&Ms and Snickers and everything last night, so uh, I'm all sugared out. Um, November 1st, I thought that uh, potentially the water level would look significantly different today, but uh, maybe it, maybe the, the major difference happens uh, further downstream from here, I'm not sure, but uh, basically they restrict a lot of the flow over the river this time of year, and uh, just to help with uh, control the ice and that. So I'll have to see if maybe the difference was down below. I'm kind of rambling now. Uh, the alarms are on, the lines are in, and uh, let's make it happen. Oh, I got, uh, I got less than an hour left to, to fish today. Um, I'm getting kind of frustrated. I thought this was going to be a no-brainer. Uh, that's why I kind of picked this spot. I 
anticipated there being a lot more fish moving through here. Uh, I'm starting to get a little frustrated. There's a giant cormorant that keeps diving and diving and diving over top of my right hand rod and I feel like my right hand rod's going to get wiped out any minute now. Uh, no, uh, no definite activity really on my rods, just a couple bleeps here and there that there's a little bit of drifting weed coming through so and the current changes here quite regularly so I can't say that I've even had any line activity and I don't even know exactly what the line activity was that I had yesterday when I set into nothing but uh, kinda looks like this uh, swim's gonna break me down before I get a chance to break it down uh, I got everything back in my car uh, except for my net and my rods uh, just because it feels like there's some rain that's going to roll through any minute I don't want to have my uh, my tackle sitting all wet until I get out next um, we didn't really when we just when we talked about John and I starting out this series we didn't really hammer down all the rules um, I may take another stab at this uh, if it doesn't pan out today but uh, there's nothing, nothing worse than I, guess, I don't know I think the only thing worse than fishing before work and catching fish uh, and then having to go to work is fishing before work catching nothing and then having to go to work so I, uh, I'm staring that in the eye at the moment and uh, uh, I wish I was uh, in a different place uh, right now but uh, I'm skunking and I've been broken down so if, if you don't see me again and John catches then uh, you know John must have uh, come up with a, a better game plan than I did but uh, if you don't see me again, now uh, you know what happened. <laughs> uh, now it's my turn. So Dave's had his go um, 10 days ago. I think it's been about 10 days since he was here. Um, I don't know his results. I don't know how it's gone. So it's my chance to break down this swim. Um, it's, we're, we're probably 15, 20 minutes from first light. I've been here an hour just getting everything kind of out of the van, and set up and ready. I took my time. I was a little too excited, couldn't sleep. So I left probably an hour and a half early from the house. <laughs> so I'm, I'm itching to get lines in the water. And I honestly would like to get them in before first light. So we'll go through my breakdown of why I'm using what I'm using, why I'm casting where I'm casting, and how I think things are gonna go once it gets a little bit more light out. But for now, I'm getting lines in. I can't wait, I've gotta do it. See you soon. Well, breaking down this swim. Um, pretty straightforward I think to me um, obviously we have a big slack water kind of back eddy right off of the main flow of the river there's a big concrete wall up to my right and uh, that breaks the current sends it out further so we get a big slack uh, back eddy with very very slow flow right in front here um, it's a natural point for bait fish to collect and obviously it draws a lot of predators in so it's a great spot for walleye and lake trout in the winter time and even now just watching the water there's tons and tons of bait fish in the water uh, there's lots of other species rising I'm seeing suckers and bass and things like that and I have seen one carp top out over the middle rod came up head and shoulders big yellow belly just flopped right over so there's carp here, for sure. Now, straight out in front, um, you know, the, the drop-off kind of goes out and then slopes down. 
and that's pretty much the way the, the majority of the river is. Um, you know, shoreline out 10, 20 feet, then drops off. But I think over to the right towards the edge of that wall, it used to be a marina in there. And I believe it flattens out a bit more and it's quite shallow. Um, so the, the taper to the drop off is much, much slower. Uh, so I, I, I think that the area to the right is more of a more of a flat area instead of kind of like straight in front of me. So I have one rod straight out in front, a little bit deeper. That rod has actually had the most kind of indication. Um, middle rod is on a 45 degree angle, let's say to me, um, fishing to what I believe is the edge of that flat area and the start of the drop. So not quite as deep. And then my right hand rod is right down the right hand margin, kind of in what I think is the shallowest water, maybe three or four feet of water um, as a just in case bite, because you can't go over there. I can cast in there, but you can't, you can't walk into there. So um, there's gonna be limited pressure there. All the lure anglers that fish here fish this way and towards the deeper water. Nobody really comes over to this side as far as I, uh, as far as I've seen any time I've been by here. So, so far there's been indication on the left. There's been a little bit of knocking in, on the middle rod for a brief moment or two right after that fish rose. Um, nothing on the right, so. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I've got pretty much all day. Uh, so I think there's a good chance. So I'm gonna just sit back. I'm gonna I'm gonna have another coffee. Um, you know, the sun's just come up. I'm really getting a good look at kind of what kind of life is moving around. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to the the tactics that I'm using a little bit later. Um, simply because I'm doing things that I don't normally do anymore specifically because of the way the water moves here. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a little while, but for now, there's life, there's signs of carp, and uh, I'm still excited. Well, here we are two hours in. The, uh, the clouds are starting to roll in. It started out as a nice, beautiful, sunny morning, uh, but we're expecting a buttload of rain coming up um, very soon and it's supposed to be a lot of rain. But uh, yeah, two hours that the lines have been in and I just, just did a recast. Um, so I'm fishing with pack bait today. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't do any kind of pre-baiting, which is kind of like a, a big rule for me when I'm fishing on the river. I have to have uh, some pre-bait in because it's, when I have short sessions, I just need to know that the fish are gonna be there couldn't do that this week so this session I'm coming in with no preparation I'm just dropping some lines in and hoping for the best so to try and put the odds in my favor I've made pack bait uh, no PBA sticks nothing like that just fishing pack bait and I've made it very sticky so it it's a mix of oats um, panko and cream corn there's a couple boilies left in there from the gooey mix that was in the bottom of the pail, but uh, yeah, a really s sticky, dense mix so that when it when I cast, it doesn't break apart on the cast. It gets right down to the bottom, and it really needs the water moving it back and forth to, to break it down. I want it to break down slow so that it's, little bits are coming off uh, steadily for quite a while. I don't want it to just hit the bottom, blow apart, and then wash away with what little flow is in this kind of slack area. Um, so a really thick mix, and I'm just packing that around the lead. I've got the exact same rig that uh, on, on all three rods, with one exception. Um, the rig on the middle rod is longer, uh, just because of where I was fishing, I guess a month ago now when I had my last fish. Um, longer rigs seem to do better uh, just because it, the flow is a little bit heavier 
but essentially other than the length all the rigs are exactly the same German rig uh, Accorda Chlor size 4 hook and uh, bait screwed on baits um, right hand rod is a single grain of corn middle rod is a pineapple chunks pop-up and the left hand rod is a trimmed down um, kind of pale brown matching um, super fruit pop-up I just trimmed it down on the sides a bit uh, but I just did a recast and I had some weird indication on the left hand rod thought maybe some weed drifted into it so I went down and tightened up the line and then again just over to my right uh, easily 20 pounder head and shoulders up out just like the one earlier so that's the second really good quality carp that I've seen in the same general area uh, but this one was more more left of my right hand rod and more right of my right hand rod or my left hand rod so yeah so it was in between the middle and the left uh, whereas the one earlier was right above the the middle so yeah very very simple tactics you know basic well my basic rigs the rig that's kind of become my go-to uh, very simple pack bait molded around the lead and just dropped in left hand rods deep middle rods and kind of that intermediate depth and the right hand rod is to the right margin kind of shallower three four feet uh, I'm still very optimistic if not more optimistic than I was at first light having now seen two fish both of them being bigger fish especially the one that I just saw that that was a big fish like definitely over 20 pounds and I don't think I'd be stretching it to say that I would it was closer to mid 20 little bump on the left there uh, now that it's light out I'm getting a lot more indication than I was there doesn't seem to be any drifting weeds so that's not been an issue the fish are here and then the, the next day the 16th was when I had my last park out of that spot there oh, 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 oh. Well, I'm going to have to uh, look back at the action camera footage because I think it just caught me losing one. Um, I was just talking to, uh, to a couple friends on the phone. Uh, they're fishing as well and they, uh, they didn't know I was out today. And uh, yeah, while I'm on the phone with them, uh, I just had a hookup. It was a small, small fish. I thought it was a sucker. As soon as I got it in close enough to see, I could see it was a carp. Uh, when I got my hook in, I felt a little burr on the hook point, so I might have dinged a rock there before that bite. All sharpened up. Gonna get some more pack bait on and get that one out. That was the left hand rod that's fishing straight out in the deeper water. get that back out as quickly as I can and I'm gonna stay off the phone for a while because I finally got a take and I lost it
starting to get frustrated now, having lost that fish. I moved the middle rod closer to the left so that I'm fishing a little bit deeper with it. And I changed the hook bait on the right hand rod from that single grain of corn uh, to a to a, a trimmed down peach and sour cream pop-up but I trimmed it to like a dumbbell shape so that it uh, was more of a wafter just to get something really dark down there I pulled my back earlier so I'm having weird muscle spasms and it's driving me nuts um, now just a, maybe 10 minutes ago I had an indication on the middle rod much like I did earlier and then absolutely nothing I'm thinking my rigs are too long so I'm going to take the longest one and I'm going to trim it down and see if a shorter rig is what's needed Whew, apparently I suddenly have to pee really bad and there's nowhere to go around here so basically I'm just taking that the rig and I've made a, a new loop and I'm, I'm basically just making it half as long You can see there where I've, I've folded that bit over, and that's where the uh, the old tie-off was. So just a figure of eight loop knot to a new loop, and that essentially makes the rig half as long as it was. So now. quick link my right hand rod is stayed over on the right hand margin the middle one I'm going to keep a little bit more straight in front rather than cast that 45 that I was doing earlier um, I think I think making this much shorter will make a difference and it looks like the action camera battery has died so I'm gonna have to change that out and hopefully once everything is set we'll get another run As you can see they're much more compact than it was sometimes you just get those single or double bleeps and then nothing Sometimes it's just simply that they got away with it because your rig was too long. Now, typically when I'm fishing the river, I need to have a longer rig. But I'm not fishing flow, I'm practically fishing still water, so this, this is probably what's going to do it.
it's wet out now. Um, yeah, aside from like the odd little indication or you know the odd little bump on the tip of the rods, there's, there's really been virtually nothing since I lost that fish. Um, we've been fishing almost four hours. So I... Honestly, not really knowing enough about this place, having not, like, fished it but more than just with lures. Um, I, did, I did have some pretty high expectations. Then seeing those two big fish this morning, my expectations got higher. Then hooking a fish, my expectations got even higher. Um, it's going to take me a while to learn this place. I'm going to have to fish it more. I have noticed to the right in this this bay, the kind of the end of the back eddy, um, there's actually quite a few chunks of like patches of like dying weed beds. So I'm sure the fish are still moving through here. And I'm keeping that right hand rod over there. Uh, I'll just recast that. You know, I was getting a lot of tip indication. I thought maybe there was a sucker after it. There's nothing there. So I, you know, put some more pack bait on it, blasted it back over there. I'm a little bit more close to a buoy that's out there. Probably should not have cast quite that far, but I did. My instinct tells me that if I hook a fish on that rod, it's going to go into the flow and kite out across the front, not inward towards the wall. So I should be okay. Lots of tip movement on that rod, even having just put it in, probably because there's, there's so much water there. It's got to, the line's got to go through. Yeah, the challenges keep mounting up. I should have done a little bit more preparation. I should have pre-baited. should have done a lot of things, but I didn't. I just rocked up and thought I could catch. Which, if I wasn't on the phone, I probably would have landed that fish. I've, I've still got, I don't know, like five or six hours left. You know, one of my rare, longer sessions. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to stick with this. I might do another bait change. I'm, I kind of have this feeling I should try white. And I really can't explain it. Normally I would throw a pink, but for some odd reason I feel like I should throw white. So if I change baits again, it'll be again on the right-hand rod because I'll want to get that little closer in away from that marker buoy. So if that cast, if that rod comes in again in the next little bit, I'll change that to probably a white silk buster. See how that does. I'm, I'm going to keep the other two rods straight out in front. Because if the fish are going to move in from the left to the right, they're going to come along that, that drop off. If they're swirling around over to the right by these weed edges, then the other rod should pick one up. This rain is supposed to intensify and get much worse, so um, we'll have to see. If I really need to, I have my bigger brawly in the van. I'm hoping that the wind stays down. The wind is not supposed to get bad at all. But only time's going to tell with that. Also, the fish stopped rising quite a while ago. So I don't know if the, this change in pressure, change in weather is going to push them down, it's going to lift them up. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Still got time.
I am absolutely soaked at this point. But success. So this came to the right hand rod that was cast at, that rod that was cast a little bit too far. on the trimmed down peach and sour cream so that that dark brown bait that I had trimmed into a, a dumbbell shape like I said with the first fish that was on the, the super fruit the, the matching kind of hot, deep brown color um, I figured that maybe maybe the darker was it so that's why I put that one on and there we go I absolutely love the color on this one. What a hell of a scrap. My, my shoe came off. It was insane. And I'm getting soaked. <laughs> so, I'm going to do a couple photos. I'm going to get this fish back. But, yeah. <laughs> Success. just realized that I've been talking to the camera for 10 minutes and uh, it wasn't recording. Oh, man. Every carp angler should have these in his barrel. I'd be lost without those today. So, there's a pipe just to my left that's... Uh, that the runoff from the road is obviously coming out out of right into the river and it has it has stirred some things up I'm getting a lot of muddy water that's coming out right in front of me and it's going left and it's going right because of the way this back eddy is swirling the, the flow around and the bait fish have moved right up into that colored water the predators are coming up underneath them and you're getting these eruptions of bait fish as the predators go after them. No doubt in my mind that some of the carp will be uh, switched on to bait fish and they'll be they'll be chasing them as well. Which could make things more difficult. Um, but that colored water should also be warmer. The river's not cold by any means. I'm, I'm blown away at how, how actually nice the t water temperature is for the middle of November but it should be even warmer still coming out of that pipe with the runoff and it seems to come in waves like it's it's not just steadily pumping out muddy water it's like a big rush will come out and then it kind of trickles for a bit and then a big rush of muddy water comes out and uh, that's that's slowly going to kind of mix with the water to my right where all my lines are you know right in front and over to the right and that uh, that's either going to shut the carp off completely or kick things into high gear. Um, it may actually... The visual aspect of my hook baits are going to be kind of useless. But scent-wise, um, should be all over it. Today's turned out to be a really good success. Uh, I've learned quite a bit uh, fishing this, you know, for carp. But the, like I mentioned before, I tried it once in like February for carp. I think I mentioned it. Um, it's like February, a bunch of years ago, and it was drifting ice, and it was when we can only use one rod, and I just had no chance. You know, I thought there would be uh, it'd be a wintering spot, and I, I couldn't prove it one way or the other now being able to fish it with three rods being able to spread out and kind of feel the different depths and kind of get a look at things see that there's still some weeds to the right um, I've learned a lot about this spot but I've got a lot more to learn about this spot this is definitely going to get more sessions 
Um, I might even add this to my list. My, my, I'm going to be doing another winter campaign this year, this winter. I don't have to go. I definitely go to my normal spot. That was the right hand rod. But I have, I haven't had another swim that I wanted to add to the mix so that I'm not just putting all my eggs in one basket. Um, this might have to be one as well. I might have to kind of split my winter campaign up over three swims. I definitely think this will be worth more investigation. And with this, now that the color water has shifted over to the right, I'm getting indication a lot more than I have been for the last hour or so. Or two hours, I would say. We may get another one. Okay, that was, uh, that was craziness. Hard, hard whack on the middle rod. Um, that's the one that I've got the pineapple pop-up on. And that was probably a three, three pound smallmouth bass. Uh, luckily it threw the hook right at the shore there, but why the hell is a freaking smallmouth bass taking a pineapple pop-up? Well, get it back out there. Well, that's me done for this session. Um, the rain has not let up. If anything, the rain has continually gotten worse. Uh, I am soaked right through. All my gear is soaked right through. Um, I, I gotta pack it in. The fog has really rolled in. I can't even see the other side of the river at this point. It's still clear over here. But looking across, you can't see the American side at all. Um, still get, I was still getting a lot of like smashes, like just one-off cracks, and then you know I'd get down to the rod and it'd be nothing. You know, line would slacken off. There was definitely something to hit the line, uh, but no hookup. There was a lot of uh, as the mud kept coming through, the bait fish kept boiling up, and whatever's chasing the bait fish kept hitting the line. So I was getting a lot of false indication there. But because I was watching, I could see what was going on didn't need to get up for those but it was just it was continuous there was there was at, at any given point there was some sort of life in the water there there was lots of things going on and lots of things to keep my attention uh, a welcome distraction from the uncomfortable uh, dampness and unfortunately my back is really really bad so I've got the, I've got the seat warmer on what a difference that'll make but overall, tackling this swim, you know, I didn't go too analytical with it. I basically approached it like I would most spots that I would fish, where it's just show up and do a little bit of pub trucking, just get the lines out. Um, because I'm, I'm so focused when I'm doing my short sessions is just get the lines out 
figure things out as you go along. I knew I had some deep water in front. I knew I had shallow water to the right. And yeah, just moved the rigs around, changed baits a couple times. Found that the darker baits are what had the carp bites. The bright bait had the attention from the bass. I switched over to white and pink at one point and had smashes on both of those that didn't didn't get me hookups. So yeah, darker baits did the job. I'm definitely not done here. There's definitely gonna be more sessions here. Um, it has my interest having seen those really big ones jump this morning. They've gotta be even bigger um, in here. We gotta be able to pull some, some really big fish out of this spot at some point. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Dave did in his session, because I haven't seen that yet. Um, it'll be nice to chat with him about what our thoughts overall after our sessions have been. Get a real breakdown on what our final thoughts are. Um, yeah. Yeah, this spot did it for me. Definitely did it for me. I'm happy really really pleased with how things went and uh yeah now it's time to go so i best get moving